So, up next, listen, we got some tickets to a movie that I don't think anyone else has seen yet. Yeah. Um, it's the next Zach Braff movie, <laughs> and we got exclusive tickets to see the next Zach Braff movie. I believe it's called Wish I Was Here. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we got into a sneak preview of this movie. Of Wish I Was Here. We're going to give you a review of what, of the movie. Of Wish I Was Here. Um... And the movie is starring. Um, well, it's starring Zach, Zach Braff. Braff. He wrote, directed, and started it because that's what he um, does. There's a lot of controversy surrounding him raising money for this movie, but that's not what we're going to talk about. We're going to going to view it objectively. Let's keep art and business separate, people. Yeah, they have no relation to each other, nor should they. Um. So one thing I know that I didn't care for yeah. was Zach's performance. <laughs> You know, I didn't think he'd be able to top his douchiness from Garden State. His sort of emotional... A douchey movie with a little bit of, um, a, a little bit of potential. A little bit of heart. Yeah. Um, you know, he wrote it with his brother. Um, um, he wrote it with his brother. And we've all seen Garden State. It's got a lot of problems. Namely... Uh, Zach Braff. Namely Zach Braff. <laughs> namely um, the packaged ending. I would say Wish I Was Here... Um, which who st stars the rich man's uh, uh, pixie girl, Anna Kendrick. <laughs> and Wait, she, no, the rich man's pixie girl was Natalie Portman. I mean that he, she's so annoying. When she plays pixie girl, she seems dumb. Don't wow. you think? Um, I think she that, actually says the line, "Are you really retarded?" Well, but that's she. How do you make that line work in a non-stupid way? I don't know, be a little, like, uh, have a little bit of wit with it. Like, are you really retarded? Like, a joke. Like, you're flirting. Like, no, you're here. right. That Actually, yeah. that would be like, better. Like, here, let's do it. Didn't you play the retarded quarterback? Um, yeah. Are you really retarded? See, that would be a good comment on his performance as well, because at that point in the movie, he kind of seems a bit retarded. Yeah. <laughs> um, so Anna Kendrick plays Janine in Wish I Was Here, and let me tell you, when she wasn't on screen, I wished she was there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you can say that again. Um, um. <laughs> let's also talk about the, um, inspired casting of Mandy Patinkin as Zach Braff's dad. Uh-huh. Um. I had no idea we were going to be this factual. I thought we were going to really make everything up. <laughs> but I, I, okay, let's go with this. Let's, um, see, let's see what this Zach Braff wishes. Number one. Well, he got Ian Holm in the first movie, so this is... Is this a step up? I don't know. I think they're both pretty great. They're both pretty great. Manny Patinkin can hit, like, a G. That's true. And he does, repeatedly, in this movie. <laughs> he delivers every single line. Gentle, high tenor notes. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> and that's part of the... Oh, Argentina. You see, here's... The problem with Garden State, I think, is it's a lot of great ideas that you just kind of stitch together... And it's very loose, and like they didn't all need to be in the same movie, but it was like every good idea he had, he just threw it at the wall and gave us everything. Yeah. And in this movie, it seems like a continuation of that, because he knew Mandy Patinkin could hit those Gs. <laughs> so he just, yeah. he basically wrote him a character where all he did was hit G notes. Yeah. And, and do, and grow a beard. Let's so he just took all the things Mandy Patinkin can do, and he made him do them. Like, he just exploited all the good things about what he had, but for no reason. You yeah. Know? I think we should uh, tell people the plot of Wish Wish I Was Here. Okay. So it's about a guy, and he's lost his phone. Yeah. And, and, and his um, meaning. And his life. meaning. And the phone ends up being a metaphor for most of that. Right. He the... even at one point says, I just can't find my meaning! I mean my phone! <laughs> yeah. Which I thought was a bit on the nose. It was actually, I, <laughs> I read that it was actually a slip uh, on the day he said that. And I just kept it in the movie because it was so perfect. Yeah, when Zach said cut to himself and then, like, ran around the camera and, like, yeah. looked at the playback, he was like, you know what, let's keep it yeah. to himself. Mm -hmm. And he has final say on everything. Yeah. Um, um, then he loses his phone, and yeah. so he calls his dad, um, Mandy Patinkin, who plays Saul Blue. How does he call him? Uh, payphone. <laughs> oh, payphone, okay. So, like, one of the last payphones. That and every time he calls his dad and says, I lost my phone, his dad's like, you're calling me now? He's like, you don't understand. But he says it in a G. You're calling me now? Yeah. That's not a G, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, and, uh, Donald Faison plays, um, um, 
His character from Scrubs. He actually yeah. comes back and, and sort of reprises... Zach Rapke's going to the hospital because his good friend, played by Jim Parsons, is in the hospital with a pretty severe ear infection. And, and Kate Hudson is a nurse. Right. But Dr. Uh, JD is also there. And there's some really impressive split-screen photography going on yeah. where we get a lot of Zach Braff interacting with himself. It's kind you know, of, I didn't think I'd like that alternate universe thing, but I think it was my favorite part of the movie. What's weird, it's like two wrongs make a right. Like, when you take yeah. a horrible person and Scientifically, then you Scientifically, that's always accurate. Yeah, you put two of them next to each other, suddenly yeah. you just you feel about a lot of love. It's like the Uncanny Valley a <laughs> bit. Um, if you take two robots that look like humans, you'll fall in love. Yeah. <laughs> that's the scientific... Yeah. Anyways... All uh, I'll say is jo- Josh Gad is also in this movie, and uh, I saw him on Broadway in Book of Mormon, and he's great. Wow. That's factually accurate. Um, so what did... Well, why would you point that out? Every, like, Everything here is factually accurate. How is that different from anything accurate. that we just said? Yep. All right. <sighs> um, sorry. Sometimes I can be redundant, folks. So I wish I was here. So I he, give it... Wait, wait. We didn't We didn't give the full plot summary, though. You're right. So he did. lost his phone. So he calls his, his dad. Phone, he has to go to the dad. hospital. His phone means his life. We know that from the beginning, yeah. which I don't think was Zach's uh, uh, goal. But the oh. first five minutes of Garden State, we knew it was about him finding himself, too. So. Yeah. And then there's this great bit of sort of meta, and it's very uh, relevant to what's happening right now in the world. He creates a Kickstarter uh, to get another phone. <laughs> and the thing about Zach Braff's character is everyone in this world loves him a and lot. And everyone's like, have... Twenty, fifty dollars. Take my house. Yeah, and the, and he, and <laughs> so he gets the phone back within about forty-five minutes of the movie, and then he spends the rest of the movie basically wondering why he still feels unhappy. <laughs> yes. Even though he has his phone back. But and and the thing that makes him happy is the perks that he promised people uh, for the various levels of donation. He has to go and give them. Yeah. So he discovers meaning by basically autographing things, giving things away. And uh, and losing all the rest of his objects. And here's something I know happens in this movie because I saw it. Yeah. Um, he sleeps with Kate Hudson, but loves Anna Kendrick and picks her in the end. And Anna Kendrick um, has a monologue where she says, like, I'm here. Where are you going? I'm, I've been here the whole time. That happens. <laughs> you're giving everything away. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you're not, you don't think people should see this. That's why you're doing that. I give Wish I Was Here two stars. Wow. Out of... Eight. <laughs> <laughs> so, so one out of four, yeah. if you really want to <laughs> slice and dice that. What about you? Or 0. 0.5 out of two. Yeah. Or 0. 0.125 out or of one. Or, like, it's... <laughs> yeah. Okay. Or, or 125 out of 1,000. Listen, you're the math man. <laughs> I... I'm the brains of this operation. Yeah. Um, surprisingly, I give this movie a solid seven. Out of... Seventeen. <laughs> That's um, about right. It, you know the way my rating system works is I assign stars. It's kind of like have you ever played Rock Band? Like the stars yeah. come as you're watching the movie. So like <laughs> he actually accumulated those seven stars really early on. And then, and then there's nothing you can do about it as the movie went down a path. You the rest of the movie... It, okay, so settled on seven already. When I say I'm giving it a solid seven out of 17, what I mean is <laughs> just watch the first 45 minutes. You're going to love it. Because the it's, first yeah. 45 minutes got all my stars. Then the rest, nothing. Except for that one really good gag at, at the end that mm-hmm. I can't tell you because it's at the end of the movie. And I want you guys to watch Wish I Was Here. But it's a this, good one. In spite of ruining it and saying that you... There's a big gag. Uh-huh. All, I, all I'll ruin about the movie is that Anna Kendrick for sure had a monologue where she said, I'm here. I've been here the whole time. And Kate <laughs> Hudson turned out to be just a fling. Wow. Do you think that this could be like Kate Hudson's comeback? No way. <laughs> just asking. Just asking. Listen, I've been... You know I love Kate Hudson. Mm-hmm. Based off of the fact that Almost Famous is my favorite movie, she's great in it. Yeah. And she's always actually quite good in everything she's in. She's just in a lot of trash and doesn't seem to care very much. But I don't think Kate Hudson will ever have a comeback, no. Mm. I really mean that. And wow. including Wish I Was Here, a movie we just saw do from you think, our exclusive tickets. Do you think if she wanted to have a comeback, she could? For sure! So it's all her attitude. I just don't think she's passionate about it. Yeah. For sure she's not. She just doesn't care. She's no. extremely talented, but she doesn't care. Okay. Uh, my friend Colby, who works at Roy Thompson Hall, yeah. uh, uh, saw her in person during, what is it, 
bunch of movies open. Hudson Fest. Anyway. Who's that? He saw her in person. Yeah. And he says she's one of the most beautiful women he's ever seen. I believe it. Yeah. I believe that. That's all the <laughs> Wish I was here. We wish we weren't there. <laughs> <laughs>